About two years ago, I went up to Nevada to go opal mining at the Royal Peacock Opal Mine, and I absolutely loved it. I think there is something just really awesome about mining specifically opal. And I think that it's because unlike diamonds or gold, each opal is totally unique. I also think it's the unknown that adds excitement because every time that you're hacking into the bentonite clay and you see something that's shiny, you're just so curious if it has color or if it's green or if it's red or whatever. It's just really exciting. So I love my experience opal mining so much. The following year, I went back to the same spot, except for this time, I didn't go to the Royal Peacock Opal Mine, I went to the Bonanza Opal Mine. And while I was there, they told me that it was actually possible to buy into the mine. You could actually own a piece of the mine as a shareholder. This immediately went on my goal board. One year later, I saved up enough cash to buy exactly one share of the Bonanza Opal Mine. And I think I'm both stoked that I set a goal and then I nailed it, but also because I just love of opal mining so much. So over the 4th of July weekend, which is my favorite holiday by the way, I went opal mining for an entire week. Now one of the problems with the opal that comes from Nevada specifically is that it cracks and crazes so easily because it has such a high water content. For this reason, most of the opal is not considered gem quality, but rather specimen quality, meaning it's really difficult to make into jewelry. Last year, we used an epoxy resin in a vacuum to get epoxy inside of the opal in an attempt to make the opal more gem quality. However, this year, I wanna try something different. There's a type of glass called borosilicate glass that is used in labware. This type of glass has a very similar thermal expansion coefficient as the opal that I found up in Nevada. So we're gonna see if we can take some of the opal that I found and put it inside this type of glass as a protective outer layer. We're here at the Bonanza Mine. Once I sign in here, I'm pretty much good to go for the day. The hours are eight to four. What I like to do is I like to start out doing what's called surface digging. So you're just going around these uh, tailings mines. So it's like after they've pulled the material off of these walls over here, it kind of ends up looking like this. It's kind of like gravelly stuff. There's still tons of opal in that. And a lot of times it just gets overlooked. Anytime you find stuff like this, really white. This is sort of like the beginning of the opalization process. So if you see a lot of this lying around, that's good. That means there's opal in the area. One of the best ways that I think they find opal is you just get as close to the ground as possible. And so for example, here is a tiny little piece. Little first catch of the day. Really, really small, but it's still really cool. So there's a lot of dust in this area. And so pretty much the entire time that I've been making this video, I'm gonna be going, <laughs> It's a really cool little tiny piece, but it's got a ton of fire in it. Looks like it's super fragile. Really, really super duper colorful. There's something somewhere in here that's valuable. We think, we hope. Here's a cool little piece that we kind of just pulled out. And here's a piece that's just sitting right out. Look how, look how great that color is. Wow, holy fire. All right, so we're in the cleanup crew and Look at that baby. Wow. Now we're gonna move on to bank digging. I've got my hard hat on. Got some closed toed uh, hard shoes. I just looked down and I just saw a nice little shimmer. And here we have a nice big black opal. So I'm gonna try to be really careful about uh, what I do around this because uh, it could break. I mean, it's probably already broken. There's so much, holy crap, wow. So my first time out at the Bonanza Opal Mine as a shareholder, I found a ton of opal. Here's what I found. So I have this whole big bag here. Uh, this was from an earlier trip. I've got this super beautiful gem, which I can't sh wait to show you guys. And then I've got some really nice fire pieces in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean these opals up so we can isolate which ones we wanna put into borosilicate. You can see in there, there's, that's the bentonite clay. That's what this brownish kind of, the, all this crap back here is. For the most part, a lot of these were found surface mining, so they've already sort of dried out. Some of them haven't. We're kind of curing them actually right now for the first time. This opal down here has already been identified as not having fire in it, so it doesn't have play of color. I really like this piece, a really cool black opal, jet black, almost looks like obsidian. Here's kind of a nice little piece. I just I barely saw it, and it looks like there's actually a little play of color. The best way to see if there's play of color or not, just take it out in the sun. All right, so when cleaning this opal, you don't want to re-wet it to the point to where you get it wet all over again. And so I don't want to like just let this thing chill in water for a period of time. So I'm gonna use a toothbrush 
but we're just going to clean it in a way, just getting some of that bentonite clay off and brushing your teeth. This particular type of opal, it's very fragile. We wanna make sure that we're always handling it with care. A really cool piece of opal. We don't really find opal, typically speaking, this size. Also, you can see through it, there's a slight bluish kind of hue to it. Because it's cracked and crazed a bit, it actually gives it this nice little sort of like interesting, not quite play of color, but it's just cool. A little brushy brushy. All right, so we cleaned this uh, opal up pretty good on the outside. We got rid of all the bentonite clay. I think it just looks really cool. It also matches my shirt. All right, so there's a little bit of play of color on the, in this one. And so I'm gonna clean this one up to show you guys what that looks like. It's really cool. That's the whole point of opals. It's like finding where they just flash all these different colors and whatnot. All right, so this is by far the most exciting piece that I've found. I've been keeping this one in water because I don't want it to crack since I found it in the bank. And when I work on this one, I actually work on it in water. Now I wanna show you guys what this stone looks like. It is magnificent. So we're actually gonna fill up this vial and that's so that we can have it in the the open into the sun without it being outside of water it kind of reminds me actually of like crane from the ninja turtles he's like stuck in this casing <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going from 400 to 1,000 to 1,500 sandpaper, and I'm just creating these little tiny pieces of opal. Basically, I'm just getting the backside off of some of these just so that more light can pass through. So we're gonna use these to put in bore silicon. Let's see what happens. We came to downtown LA and we we're in Sabelle's studio to do some flame working. And what's the biggest difference between flame working and regular hot shop glass? So the biggest difference, basically the process of hot shop glass is you start with molten glass and then you pull it out of a furnace and then you work it till it gets cold. And then flame working is the inverse where you take cold glass, heat it in a torch and then melt it as you work. Got it. And this type of glass has a, an, a coefficient of expansion, and we think that that's similar to opal. So we're going to try to actually put a piece of opal in this piece of glass. The first time that we attempted to put it in, like in a bubble, once it got close to the flame or like how much heat it was giving off, it just exploded the opal in the vial. We captured like all of its opaly goodness, like in kind of like a little marble. I'm so curious to see what that looks like once that comes out, because there's no color in that particular opal. So I'm really curious, like if we could get color in that pattern perhaps. But before we do that, we're gonna try one more time. We're gonna make two pancakes, and then we're going to try to squish the opal in between that, see if we can get the uh, opal to stay in the glass that way. I think it looks so tight. For our third test, we're gonna see if we can get this into a nice little globular piece of glass. All right, I'm going for it, you ready? I think it's in there. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Let me try and scoop it up. Pasta fish. That looks so cool. This is what it looks like when you put someone's like cremated dust in a glass. Oh wow. Okay, so up until this point, we've done a really good job about getting the opal into the borosilicate. However, every time we've done that, it's kind of exploded into this whitish, kind of silver, shiny looking stuff. And so we really wanted to capture the essence of the opal, so we came up with the idea of putting the opal in the glass, kind of like a ship in a bottle. Right. Yeah, that's cute. For our last test, we're gonna take an opal with lots of color, and we're gonna see if by putting it into the borosilicate, we can still get the opal to show some of that play of color. I seriously cannot believe that works so well. And also, I'm pretty sure that's never been done before. That's a first. Okay, there we go. We went out to the opal mine. We found some opals. We came to Sabelle's studio and we successfully put opal in glass in two ways. One as it crushed up, but it still has a play of color. Incredible, looks silver, it's awesome. And another way we just encapsulated it just as is opal inside of a piece of glass. We're actually going to be putting these on Sabelle's website for sale. There's a link in the description below. So everything that we made today, we're actually putting up for sale. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you really soon.